Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the H-Pattern Vlog. In this episode, we're talking performance parts for the GT86. As you saw in the last track day video, it's getting walked in a straight line and we decided we need to get some more power behind it. To do that, we've gone out, we've got an intake, we've got a pairing intake, which sits in front of the radiator there, so it's a good cold air intake. We've got the Sydney Motorsports Engineering headers and the overpipe. And we got that going into another two and a half inch uh, front pipe. So eventually we'll finish off the exhaust, we'll probably put a muffler in the rear end of it and uh, we'll get it over there and get it tuned. To work out what power increases we've done, rather than dynoing this car standard then putting all of these parts on it, I'm gonna put these parts on it and we're going to dyno one of the black cars, see what power figure it makes standard on the same dyno on the same day. Then we're gonna take the white car over with these parts and see what power we made. All right, to install this parent intake, you have to pull the bumper bar off and you have to loosen the top of the radiator support so you can actually put this tube down and through one underneath. So we're gonna pull out all the standard air box and I'm gonna chuck that in. So let's get stuck into it. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna start removing the standard air box fasteners. gonna have an AC delete. I've already got the lines off it, so I'm gonna pull the condenser out while I'm in here. Okay, so the condenser's out. The next thing we need to do is we need to loosen this radiator support bracket here so we can fit the tube through. So let's get these undone. <laughs> One thing you always want to do with an intake pipe like this, you want to check the inside of it's clean. So you see all the smuts and metal, that'd go straight in your engine because this is past the filter. So you want to clean this thoroughly before installing it. So not just with pairing with any intakes like this, you want to just check that there's not stuff like that in there because that'll end up straight in your engine. So once you've got that intake cleaned, you can install it. So you want to poke it through, Whoop. poke it through there. install the air sensor. So there's a little bit of a problem. If you don't install these correctly, the belt can actually tear the backside of your in intake hose here. So you wanna make sure that you've got adequate clearance there before doing everything up. Screw it on. Get it on there. So next you wanna reinstall this air dam. It's slightly revised from factory. Perrin give you these little brackets that you use into here, which slightly change the shape of how it's assembled. There you go. So that spaces that back slightly, which gives you clearance. Just stick the filter in. So that's the Perrin intake, correctly installed without any clash with the belt there so you want to make sure that also your O2 sensor doesn't clash with the compressor housing or the belt but much tidier looking engine bay with that done I'll uh, chuck the front back on and then we'll put it up on the hoist and we'll start putting the exhaust in first thing we got to do to get the headers on is pull off all this under tray under here so there's a heap of bolts fastened all around here we'll rip all of that off and that'll expose the headers and the rest of the pipe and then we'll start chucking it on So once you've got your overpipe disconnected, leave that in place. We're gonna pull the headers off first. So there's six bolts uh, through any of the bank that holds this on. Make sure you've got your oxygen sensors unplugged and then undo these six bolts. So I had no luck trying to get that overpipe out. So what I've done, I've unbolted the engine mount here and I've got the port of power. And I'm gonna try and lift this engine slightly on one side. Just rock it a little bit. Success. That's a pain in the neck. Oh, 
So I've got all the old exhaust out. These are the factory headers. I've taken the heat shield off to sort of show you what you're actually dealing with there. So that's catalytic converter. That's also a catalytic converter. So we've pulled both the cats out of this system now. So when contrasting the overpipes, it's about a two inch overpipe versus the Sydney Motorsports Engineering, which is two and a half inch, uh, and it's stainless steel. So where it's got dints all through here, these are factory dints by the way, these aren't damaged. It's pretty restrictive, so fingers crossed this will pick up a lot of power there with this two and a half inch overpipe now. I've gone with an equal length header. So from all the research I've done, they pick up a lot more mid-range torque and a lot of higher RPM power. So they're better than the equal length headers in that regard. So because we're going for more power, I don't really care for the boxer rumble in this particular vehicle. I'm only going for power, so I went to equal length headers. All right, I'm gonna start by chucking the overpipe in the car. Which goes in heaps easier than the factory one came out with no heat shield. So we can let that engine back down. So what Sydney Motorsports Engineering supplies is this little part here, which what this does, this gives the O2 sensor the illusion that there's still a catalytic converter in the system, and that means that the computer won't throw a fault code. So it wants to be post where the catalytic converter used to be. So that's the Sydney Motorsports Engineering head as an overpipe and uh, two and a half inch front pipe. Looks great under there. So I'm just gonna drop the car down, put the O2 sensors back in, and then I can put the under tray back together. All right, we're about to start this thing up for the first time since we put those, that exhaust on it. So let's see what it sounds like. It's obnoxiously loud at the moment. When you crack the throttle, it's really, really raspy. It's not, when you constant revs, it's not terrible, but it's got to have a muffler put in it. It's way too loud for it, particularly in car. So I'll finish off that last bit of pipe and we'll put a muffler at the back of it. Just something little, just to take that rasp out of it. And uh, we'll get it on the dyno pretty soon and uh, see what power it makes. Later. So I've ordered this AF Racing uh, strap brace. Why I ended up going with this strap brace in contrast to other ones is it's got this built-in uh, brake master stopper so that adds a bit of extra rigidity to the brake master as well as to the chassis so that's a nice little upgrade that does both in one part
just finished up on the dyno at Alice Tuning and Performance Centre. So Luke's had it on the dyno and we've managed to pick up about 15 to 20% power gains, uh, starting at about uh, 3800 RPM and going right through to red line at 7500, so pretty good gains. The original number with this car was 106 kilowatts and we've moved it up to 123 kilowatts of the wheels. So we're gonna put the black car on the dyno next and we're gonna check out what these performance upgrades have done for the power figure. So the black cars made 107 kilowatts of the wheels, which is one kilowatt more than the white car made originally. The other thing that you'll notice is that the torque dip on the stock car is a lot less than the modified car, but the trade-off for this is obviously more peak power. That dip on a street car would probably be pretty terrible, but on a track car it won't be so bad because it, it finishes at 3800 RPM, so we won't really be, ever be that low in the revs. But overall what's most interesting is all of those performance parts really haven't done anything until it's tuned. Pretty happy with the overall gains on the car, that's pretty good. We're looking at maybe going ethanol down the track and seeing if we can pick up a little bit more power, but overall I'm really happy with the results. Luke's done a great job tuning it.